Hey, what's up, Scott Balkin here, and I'm with Kessler Crane today, and we are going over the Kessler Digital Control Center, or DCC, today. Now, this is a box you may not be familiar with, and hopefully by the end of this video, you'll understand both what DCC does and how to get the most out of it. Now, the big news is that DCC is now supported on the Kessler Cine Shooter with version 2.5 firmware that was just released, as well as on the Second Shooter Pro and Plus models. Now, the DCC can be used to program moves directly on Cine Shooter, program very complex moves performed live and played back later, and to perform the Cine Shooter manually for remote operations where you want the power and flexibility of a physical joystick and controls all at the same time. First, before we connect it to Cine Shooter, let's make sure all your firmware is up to date. You will need to be running at least firmware version 1.5.0.13 for DCC. Now to update the firmware, download the firmware from KesslerCrane.com, unzip the contents of the firmware and note the file's location, connect the USB to your computer and your DCC as well as power on your DCC. Press menu and navigate down to option number seven. Press the center of the joystick button. Then select one, firmware, with the center button. This will put DCC into firmware mode. Now on your computer, DCC will now show up as a new media drive. Simply drag the firmware file you unzipped earlier to the DCC drive and let go. It will copy to the DCC. Now, please let the process finish on the DCC. The screen will prompt what's happening and it will restart and begin the upgrade on its own. It should take no more than about two minutes. Now, once complete, we are now ready to start using DCC. Next, make sure your Cine Shooter is updated to the latest firmware as well. Now, let's connect DCC to our Cine Shooter. Use the DCC connection cable and plug the RJ11 plug into the DCC and the Limo connector into the EXT port on the Cine Shooter. Now, if you're using Second Shooter, make sure you're only using a Kessler connection cable. Although they may look similar to a phone cord, they are not the same. Using any cable besides a Kessler cable could damage your devices. Now, power up your Cine Shooter. Arrow down to Settings and click. Then click on Operating Mode, next click More, and finally click on DCC Mode. Your Cine Shooter will restart, and when it comes up, it will say DCC Mode. If you ever need to escape out of DCC Mode, simply click the Menu button on Cine Shooter, and it will restart back into normal mode. And now, Cine Shooter is connected to the DCC. Let's head over to the DCC and learn about it. Now, everything you need to operate the DCC is on the front panel. Now, if we press the menu button, we will see a couple of familiar commands, just like on City Shooter and Second Shooter. Use the joystick to move around the cursor. The run command will execute any program move. Program move works just like City Shooter and Second Shooter as well, with two or three keyframe programmable moves. Now, we're going to skip over play record a move for a moment and proceed down to calibration. Here, you can calibrate all axis, single axis, or clear them all. Let's calibrate a single axis now. Let's head down to Calibrate Single Axis, press the joystick button. Now, press the joystick button on the axis you want to calibrate. All you need to do now is move the joystick in the direction of the axis and set a begin point and then an end point by pressing the joystick button. We're going to calibrate the tilt axis first. Click in, and then we're going to pull back a little bit. That's about right. Click, and then we're going to go down. And calibration is great when you want to make sure that you perform within the limits of your environment here. So we're going to go ahead and go to pan next. Good. Right about there. We're going to go to the next axis. This is named zoom, but I'm using it as roll. So we're going to calibrate that. And then finally, we're going to go down to the focus motor. We're going to calibrate that. Now press the menu button to exit that menu, and then let's exit one more. Now we can go down to joystick configuration. Here, we can change the direction of the axis as well as assign a control input. To cycle through the available options, just click the joystick button. You can see CW is clockwise, and if you were to click it, 
that would reverse it at counterclockwise. A couple of quick notes. You can now assign the aux knob as an available input control. This can be assigned to any of the axis except for pan and tilt. To do this, the axis must first be calibrated. Now, the reason for this is that the aux knob is absolute, so the position of it will be in relation to the calibration settings. Simply click the joystick button on one of those axes and choose aux. Press menu to escape. We're gonna set this one to focus, change it to aux. Press menu to exit. Next, we'll go down to Name Axis. Here, you can change the name for each axis for what it is. Simply scroll through the options by clicking the joystick buttons. Now, many names will appear depending on the axis that you're configuring. Press Menu to exit. Next, we'll head down to Utilities. Here, you can perform firmware updates. There's an emergency stop here as well, but let's head down to the Speed Ratio. Here, we could tell each axis what percentage of the maximum speed we would like the motors to run. So, if your pan motor has a maximum 10,000 RPMs and you change the value to 50%, the motor will never exceed 5,000 RPMs. To change, click the joystick button on the axis and rotate the joystick clockwise or counterclockwise to get to the setting that you would like. Press the joystick button when finished. You can now move to any of the other axis if you'd like. Now let's go down to damping ratio. Now this is the maximum percentage of damping on each axis. So if you want the tilt axis to be snappy and the pan axis to be slow and relaxed, you can configure that here. Move the joystick up and down, select. From there, you can just configure each axis percentage using the rotation. Just lock it in to where you'd like it. Press the button and exit back. Now let's go to the operational side of the DCC. Now on the left side, there are two knobs, speed and damping. These are global adjustments for max speed and damping. These will use your custom configured individual axis configurations when adjusting these. So if you set the pan axis to 50% max speed and set the front panel knob to 50%, then the maximum speed of your pan would be 50% of 50% or 25% motor speed. All other axes would be calculated based on their individual setting. The same is true with the damping knob. Now, as mentioned before, the aux knob can be programmed to an axis. Now, I prefer to use it on an axis like a Focus or a Zoom or an Iris motor because of the absolute positioning of the knob. It just works better there. Now, the Log and Linear knob allows you to choose the deadband response curve on the joystick, with Linear being, well, linear, where the high value will push the response so that you have to move the stick quite a bit before the motor begins to operate, and pushing further will increase the response in a very straightforward manner. Now, as you move towards the log position, this will slowly change from a linear to a more natural feeling curve. Now, the deadband setting will prevent unintentional axis moves when you're moving, say, the tilt, and you happen to be pushing a little bit to one side, a log setting would help that as well. Now, many people find that around 30% or so in log is what they prefer, but you should test and find the setting and value that works best for you and the way you use a joystick. Now, let's head back to the menu and let's talk about that play move option. Here, you can record up to three performances where you're controlling all of the axis at the same time and it records it in real time. It's a great way to get a move that well, might take a lot of time to program just right. To record, tap on the number you want to use. We're gonna use number one. Here, you can go to the record and select. The DCC will pause and will wait for you to be ready. And when you're ready to perform the move, click the joystick button and perform your move. Let's do that now. We're gonna record a move. It's ready, press the joystick button. We got our aux here and turn, tilt back, rotate. And we're gonna adjust that focus. Now we're gonna come back. Go back this way. And come down. 
Press stop when done. Now, if you notice, there's a timer for the performance, so you can keep track of how long your move is. And when you're finished, you click stop. Now, you can play back your move in real time. It tells you you're gonna play back in 22.9 seconds, and away it goes. So all of that is to show how you can pre-program DCC. But the other great thing about DCC is you can simply perform live with it. You have four axis immediately at your fingertips. And by double clicking the shift button, you have even more. Mount it to a Pocket Jib Pro and you have a full remote controlled jib solution from the operator position. Live events where you have little or no control over where the subjects are moving is another great use of DCC. Moving anything in any direction live with focus adjust, it's all available right at your fingertips and you can just practice and you'll become a pro in no time. DCC has become the simple and flexible command center where and how you need it most. And if you have any questions about DCC or any other Kessler gear, head over to KesslerCrane.com. Feel free to send them any link to your BTS and finished projects. They love seeing what you do with your Kessler motion control. <music>